All right, guys, how you doing? So uh, this video is going to be me entering Laos from Cambodia. It's a raw travel vlog, which is just how I like it. This is what you're going to experience if you're backpacking through Southeast Asia. It's going to be raw. It's going to be like this. Um, I enter Laos and I go to the 4000 Islands, which is a incredible, unknown, beautiful part of Laos on the southern tip near the Cambodian border. Hope you enjoyed the vlog, guys. Thank you for watching and stay on the road. Oh, good morning guys, it's 3.30 uh, and uh, I've got an 11 hour bush in to Lao. So Lao, here we come. Oh, I'm so tired man, but here we go. Wow, country number 32. Let's do it. guys so now I'm in a town called Karong I'm the only person left on the entire bus and it looks like it's about a half an hour drive to the border so I don't know all right guys I'm just at the border between Laos and Cambodia you can see it behind me and this is the sleepiest border town I have ever been to in my entire life. There's no lorries, there's no trade, there's nothing going through. It's just like a ghost town. There's a few backpackers in here, but other than that, there's like literally nobody here. I'll give you a little walk around. This is the craziest border town ever. So down there, that's where the border is, but there's no cars. There's literally nobody here. It's pretty surreal. If you go to the borders in Thailand or the borders with Myanmar, it's just bustling with trade and goods coming through and people and tourists too here between Cambodia and Laos. I know it's a pretty remote place but there is nothing here. Anyway let me just give you a little walk around here. There's, I must warn you there's not, not a lot to see but yeah, this is the sleepiest border town ever been to. There is literally nothing going on here. <laughs> it's just weird. So as we crossed the border, we gave our passports to what we thought was an official because there was nobody else there. It turns out he was a tout. I'll tell you more about that later in the vlog. This is weird. Very weird, isn't it? Like we're not even going to the like uh, immigration guy that's letting us through and this guy's doing it for us. Alright guys, so I've arrived here at Dondet, but I have no data and so I need to get um, some sort of internet connection so I can find out where my accommodation is. Hello? Well, I guess nobody's home. This is a tourist information centre. Hello sir, you have a SIM card here? Yeah, yeah, I have a SIM card. Okay, yeah. right, so I managed to find a SIM card and uh, 90,000 for five gigabytes of data for 30 days. Don't know if I'm paying over the odds there or what, but it's what it is. I'll probably be here for about 11 days, so it doesn't seem too bad. All right, guys, so frustratingly, I have to go back to where I came from because all the ATMs on the island are closed. So I've had to get a boat back to the mainland, go to the ATM and go back. So after a bit of kerfuffle, 
which means a bit of stress to anyone who doesn't know what that word means. I finally made it on the way to my accommodation. Hopefully it's still open though. I heard that the reception closes quite early, so maybe I'll have nowhere to stay tonight, maybe. But I don't know, but uh, you see that girl then on the boat? She kept blowing kiss like blowing like to me all the time. I was like, why? And then the guy, the, the boat driver was saying, oh look, lady, lady, lady. And I was like, is she a hooker? I mean, I don't think she was, but I don't know. That was pretty weird. <laughs> I don't know, I think she's been a little bit over friendly, but I was like, damn, does she want, you know? I didn't know anyway. It was confusing. It was a girl that waved to me, you know, but uh, first impressions so far, I've been in Laos, it's, it's extremely traditional, extremely old fashioned. Um, that's the first thing that I noticed about it. Now I had read before that Laos is an extremely conservative country, very conservative culture. It's one of the only five remaining communist countries on the planet, China, North Korea, Vietnam. I'm not sure what the other one is, but this is one of them. And it's very traditional. A lot of the girls dress in traditional like corsets, you know, where you at the back, you tie them. Just very, 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 very traditional. Maybe the most traditional place I've been to on a par with Burma or Myanmar. Um, but it feels very relaxed and very cool and very, very chilled. The locals are a lot calmer than Cambodians. They're a lot more relaxed. It's got a very chill vibe. This is a beautiful little island here though. I can't wait to explore it. Lots of little restaurants, cafes, little bars. Really, really chilled and you can have a swim in the river as well. You can see behind me. Apparently it's a very, very clean river, perfectly safe to swim in, so. But let me look at the place, it's very, oh no, just very, very provincial. All right, so this is it, the last resort. Check this place out. Hello. Now here in uh, my little shack. So I'm spending two nights in this shack, check it out. Got a mosquito net to be fair. It is literally a shack. Let's go grab some food. All right, so I managed to lock it. Now let's go and get some food. That's basically my hostel. A bunch of little shacks. I have no idea if anyone else is even staying there, but it's like I say, $5 per night. It's super cheap. Wi-Fi, fan, mosquito net. Not much else you can really ask for, I don't think. So I'm literally now just walking to find some food and there's like a hundred cows just roaming the street behind me. I don't know if they got an owner, like where do they belong to? You know what, screw it, let's go and check out these cows, see what they're all doing. If you can avoid a border crossing by a, if you can afford to fly, you should always fly because it often, border crossings are cheaper but there's that many scams and stuff. Oh my God, look at this. I can't even think straight. There's like a sensory overload of cows. There must be about 200 cows. Anyway, so like I was saying, if you can avoid a border crossing, do it. Today I was scammed twice. So the first scam was um, I got to a checkpoint where I changed buses and the guy told me, okay, you give me $3 now, um, I'll pay, for, that will co cover your boat from the mainland to the island. Anyway, so give me like a ticket. I take it to the, the ferry guy here, it says take ticket. So he scammed me of three dollars, US dollars. Not a lot of money, but it's the principle that counts. Second scam that happened was when we got to the border, a guy took our passports and did it all for us. And he said, it's $45. It was kind of, I was on my own, but I was with these Scottish guys and we were sort of like going over the border together. And we kind of should have just said no, like, you know, and done it ourselves. Anyway, it turns out you give him $45 and he takes $10 for himself and there's literally like no point in doing it. So I've kind of been scammed out of $13 today on the border, which is actually probably pretty good because people get scammed of a lot more. So like I say, if you can avoid the border crossings and fly, you, you're you not going to get scammed. It's half the stress and often getting a border crossing, it actually works out quite expensive because of the scams, because people are trying to pull your pants down. They're taking advantage of you. Um, on the Cambodian borders, both times I've had big scammers. So if you can avoid them, just avoid them. One of the things that frustrates me about the online travel industry is that it's not always like a real perception of travel. And so today you've seen me crossing the border. It's like not been fun, it's been stressful, I've been scammed, I've struggled to make my way to this place. And that's for me the real travel, that's the beauty of, of real travel. That's what it's like. And a lot of these 
uh, vloggers do amazing videos, great filmmakers, amazing cinematics, make it look like traveling is always glamorous, it's not. And hopefully from this vlog you can kind of see that this is really what travel most of the time actually is. It's a good job that I've got a very, very good torch on my mobile phone because it's going to get super dark around here tonight. And one of the reviews that I read was that it gets super dark at this hostel I'm staying at. It becomes very, very hard to, to get to. So I can see why. There's like, like no light here at all. Burger cost me four dollars, including a coke. Pretty expensive, actually. Now I'm gonna go and head back to my uh, accommodation and do some editing. All right, so I thought I'd recorded uh, a finishing clip for the video, but I think I accidentally deleted it. Silly me. But that was a pretty cool day in Laos. Real travel, raw travel. So um, I traveled Laos um, for the next like two or three weeks and had a great time in the country. So a lot of vlogs to come from Laos. So if you want to see those, click subscribe. Keep watching. Stay on the road. Peace out. Thank you guys and uh, all the best.